Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. My name is Fitz Crittle. Welcome to the Minister's Corner. In this video, we're going to take a look at the highlighting tool of the Logos Bible Software application. And in this video, we're looking at particular on the desktop. That was one of the questions I got asked during our Essential Jesus Daily Devotional was how did I use the highlighting tool? Uh, what was my method? What was my thought process, why I selected some text versus others. Well, that's arbitrary, right? That is completely subjective. It is up to you. What stands out to you as you read scripture? And it's great that Logos added this tool because, you know, back in the day, we all had our highlighter pens and we would highlight text in our print versions of the Bible. So it was good to see we have that same feature on the digital version. Well, I got the Logos application pulled up on my desktop. So let's dig in. So I've got John chapter one pulled up here and I'm going to select just some passage of scripture here. So I'm going to select word was with God. Once I let go of the mouse, this little menu pops up. So you see six highlighting options. These are the last six that I used. And so I can select any one of these. So we'll select here. And of course, now you see that that text is highlighted. So I'm going to word was God and we'll select the green uh, marker style of highlight, you know, and he was in the beginning with God and I can add a box around it. Now, one of the great things about the highlighting tools that I often use is that you can use multiple highlighting styles or what I like to say is you can stack highlights. So, for example, I want a box around word was with God and I want the blue highlighting. Well, I go and select it again and I can add that box around that particular style of highlighting on that text. Now, you can stack multiple colors. It doesn't look very good, but you can do it. So word was with God. I'm going to just select the blue here. And now you've got blue on top of the green, but they're two different styles because one is more of a, a actual marker style. The other one is just a box, but you can see there, you can even stack multiple colors. I don't do that, but you can. So now that you've done that, let's say you want to remove your highlight. Well, you can just go and highlight that section and over on your right here in that second row, it says remove highlighting. You just select that. The highlighting is gone and you can do multiple highlights. So I want to get rid of all of this. And so I can select there and now all the highlighting is removed. Now, you only saw six options. Logos has way more than that. But in order to look at the other highlighting options, you have to bring up the highlighting tool. So I'm going to show you two ways to do that. So if I highlight uh, in the beginning was the word or anything in your particular library here, the menu pops back up again. But this time, all the way to the right, you'll see this little marker icon and it says open highlight tool. If I click that, then over to the left, you'll see the highlighting tool. Now you see tons of options. So with my hot with my text already highlighted, I can select green. I can go here and it says the word was God. I can go ahead and select orange. Now, if I highlight a text, you notice my little shortcut menu here, my frequency starts to change, right? See the orange, the green, the blue, those are the last three I selected. And again, like anything else, you can go here and you can stack. So I'm gonna do a box and I'm going to do red. So same options, but now you see you've got all kinds of options here to highlight text, to make things stand out. You even have some inductive options. So those of you who are not familiar with the inductive Bible study uh, method, 
I do have a video here on the Minister's Corner, several videos, in fact. Um, so I'm going to put the playlist to the inductive Bible study in the upper corner here, as well as down in the description below. But you've got tons of, tons of, tur turns? You've got tons of options here that you can choose from, uh, from the Logos Bible application. Now, let's say, you know what? I don't like any of these or I have my own unique style I want to create. You can do that. In the left here, you see where it says new palette. I will select new palette, and then down at the very bottom here, you see it's untitled, so I'll give my new palette a name, so I'm gonna say Fitz's palette. Right, so this is really just a folder. So this is just a place where I'm gonna store all of my custom highlighting style. So, so there it is, fits this palette. So next in this little drop down menu item here, I will go and select add a new style. And so I'm gonna call this style my style. And if I can spell, there we go. And so now you've got all of these options, font style, background, text effects, borders, image, insert text, labeling. So I'm gonna select here, let's say I want it to be bold. And the background here is going to be, I'm gonna use a natural highlighter. And I'm gonna select uh, this little color here. And text effects, hey, I want it to glow. So I'm gonna add a little, let's see here, we're gonna select this color here. And if I want to add a border, I could do so. Going around the text, I'm going to add a dash dotted line around that image is here. So you can go ahead and you can click to choose an image if you have something uh, that's pre set up. I can insert a text here. So you have all of these options for your style that you want to create from scratch. Also, there's some other things here in terms of maybe you want to change the font itself, right? So now that I've got everything configured and set up, I would just click Save. And now under Fitz's palette, I have my style. So if I select text of scripture here, I can go and select my style, and now there it is right there. This also shows up in the shortcut menu, so if I select more text here, there it is, but it has sort of this person icon, uh, but there it is, and I can select it, and it has everything I chose, and I can stack that as well. So you can create your own style. Now, Let's say I want to delete this. Now, keep in mind, if I delete this style I created, it will also delete the text that was highlighted. So, made through him and without him. So notice those two here. And it's gonna delete my style here if I delete it from the palette. So, from the drop down, I go and select delete, uh, delete style. Notice it's gone, but it kept this box because that is one of the default styles that are already present. So I'm going to go to Fitz's palette and I'm going to delete that as well. But that's the real core of how I use highlighting. highlighting. Some of my favorites that I like to use is, uh, you saw a lot of this in our devotional, was I love this double green line. Now it's used for a location, that's the purpose of it, but of course you can use any of these highlights for whatever you want. And so I loved using that, particularly if I wanted to stack the highlights, I would always use this one quite often. So that was one of my favorites. Also the ones I like to use quite a bit are the ones that highlight Jesus. So I'm gonna go and find that one. Here it is. So the one that's Jesus Christ, I loved using that one. You know, so I'm gonna just select something. Light of Men, I'm gonna select that one. So it highlights it and it puts this cross. And I love using that one. So it will put the cross on every line. That's also one of my favorites. There's another one I like to use sometimes for God. You know, it adds the little um, sort of, I guess that's a Trinity type icon. It's a, it's a triangle. Um, I love using that one. So that's some of my favorites there as well. So let's say that you like the highlights 
but you want to get rid of them. Not delete them, but you want to just, you don't want to see the highlights right now. So what you can do is you have to go to this little menu icon here, which is your visual filters. If I select that, scroll down to where I see notes and highlights, I can uncheck this and now all the highlights are gone. I just removed the visibility. So the highlighting themselves is still there. Oftentimes I'll use that because I want to read the text and sometimes if you have a lot of highlights, it can kind of get in the way, it can be distracting. So if you want to remove all distractions, that's what you would use that feature for. At least that's how I use it. And I'm going to go back and highlight it again. And you've got other options so you can be more granular. So if I use one of those inductive precepts or a solid color, where it says no notebook, so if your highlight is not associated with a notebook, you can say no notebook. And see, none of these were associated with notebooks, so they're all removed. So you can be a little bit more selective as to how you remove your highlights. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is your highlights do create a note. All right, they're not directly associated with the note. You can do that, but they are associated with your notes. So if I go to tools and I pick up notes and on the right over here, see where it says highlights? So I can filter based on all of my highlights and I've got even more options. I can do it based on the Bible translation. I can do it based on the book in the Bible. So for example, in the book of Genesis, I've got 14 highlights. I can just select Genesis and now everything I have highlighted in Genesis, I have here. And you can click on this, for example. So let's bring up Genesis 3.3. And it shows you that translation and the highlight is right there. So that's a great way if you don't remember. So, you know, I was in Exodus and I think I highlighted some tech. You can go and you can find it. And so uh, I will play around with that because there are other types of feature features. You can look with the uh, notes and you can drill, really drill down. Um, not only that, but you can use search functions to uh, so I'm going to bring up the search tool here. So if I click on here for my search, there is highlighter and pen. So if you want to do a search based on this, you can. But one other thing, I want to go back to John. So let's go back to John here. Now, this is the desktop, app desktop application. I'll look at the mobile here in the next video. I do 90% of my highlighting in the desktop application just because I find it to be more user friendly. And because when you do it on the desktop and you're signed into the same account on the desktop as well as your mobile app, your highlighting does sync both direction. So that's a great feature. That's why I spend, because most of my time when it comes to study of the word, I am on the desktop. And so it's great to know that your highlights sync back and forth. Well, that is a general overview of the highlighting tool in the Logos Bible application. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing and check out some other content while you're here. This is Fitz. God bless you. And I'll see you in the next video.